I'd like to say that uh, after all this preaching that I've heard this week, I feel mighty little, and I probably won't, without a shadow of a doubt, won't hold you long this morning. But when I read this person, this part of the scripture, and I read this one part, the Lord just blessed me real good. And it seemed like every time I read, uh, read it, he, he, he blessed me. There were just a couple, three things, uh, so it probably won't last long. But uh, it's not always in the length anyway, as far as that goes. And we noticed that the Lord blessed uh, 30 minutes, blessed 20 minutes, he blessed 46 minutes, he blessed all, all week long. So I trust this morning just for a few minutes that he would... He would bless you. If you have your Bibles, I'd like to turn with me to the third chapter of the book of Joshua. We'd like to start reading in verse 7. <clears throat> it says, And the Lord said unto Joshua, This day will I begin to magnify thee in the sight of Israel, and that they may know that I, as I was with Moses, so will I be with thee. And thou shalt command the priest that bear the ark of the covenant, saying, When ye are come to the brink of the waters of Jordan, ye shall stand still in Jordan. And Joshua said unto the children of Israel, Come hither and hear the words of your Lord, uh, hear the words of the Lord your God. And Joshua said, Hereby ye shall know that the living God is among you, and that he will without fail drive out before you uh, the Canaanites and the Hittites and the Hivites and the Persites and the Gershonites and the Amorites and the Jebusites. Let's pray. Our Heavenly Father, again, Lord, each one of us want to thank you for the revival we had, the uplift personally that you gave me, and I'm sure others too, Lord. But we realize now, Lord, that uh, them days are over and we got to continue to serve you, or uh, maybe I shouldn't have said got to continue, but we want to continue uh, serving you, Lord. And we ask you to bless just for a little while this morning. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. All right, this is, the, this is the part that Moses had died, and Joshua was going to be the leader. And I read to you there, and there was something that I read while I was reading this, that when I did, the Holy Spirit just blessed me that I had to start wiping tears there at the desk at home. And it's out of that tense verse when it said, And Joshua said, Hereby ye shall know that the living God is among you. Amen. My God's alive. Amen. He's a living God. He always has been a living God. The Apostle Paul in the book of Hebrew, in about the 20th chapter through there, around verse 6, says that it was a fearful thing to fall into the hands of a living God. Well, why would that be, preacher? Why would it be fearful to fall in the hands of a living God? i tell you why. A statue can't do a thing to you. It can't hurt you. And it can't bless you. And it can't hear you. And it can't answer prayers. And it's just nothing but a pagan God. It's really not even a God. And it, uh, it can't send judgment upon you. But the God that's alive can. And as long as we serve Him, we don't have a thing to worry about this morning. I'd like to look, as I looked into this just a little bit, and there's just a couple stories, and there are stories that you're well familiar with, but this here part come out, and it just refreshed me and blessed me. In the book of Kings, in the first book, rather, in the book of Samuel, in the first Samuel, we find the story that you all know about, where that... The, uh, the Philistines uh, was fighting against Israel. And there was one on one side of the mountain, 
and there was one on the other. And uh, there was this giant by the name of Goliath of Gath. He had come out and he would make this big statement and say, uh, if you would uh, uh, come and kill me, we will be your servants. Uh, but if I kill you, then uh, uh, you're going to be our servants. And for 40 days he'd come out and he said that. And he told uh, in there how he was dressed from head to toe and the spear and, and the shield that he had and all that. It told that whole story. And the Bible said that Jesse uh, had eight children and the three oldest children went with Saul uh, in the battle. Uh, but David was the youngest one. And he stayed home and he watched the sheep. But one day his father said to him, he said, uh, David, I want you to take this parched corn and these ten loaves, uh, 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 to these loaves into your brother and sort of check and see how they are. See how they're doing, in other words, and, and take these here cheeses uh, to the captains of the thousands and, and go and, and then report back to me. Uh, now that's only a natural thing. A father would want to know how his boys is doing, especially uh, if they're in war. And so David, he went there and he, he did it. And while he was there, uh, this giant come out. And he made that big same statement. I defy the armies of Israel. Why don't you pick you out a champion and let him come and fight me? And if you kill me, we will be your servants. And, and so this caught David's ear. And someone said uh, to him, said, you know, whoever would kill him, uh, the, uh, Saul would uh, make his house free and give him riches and give his daughter for marriage and uh, all this stuff. And David heard that, uh, uh, but that don't believe that's what concerned David. Uh, what got David was uh, uh, that he was going to defile uh, my friend the army or uh, Israel. And so my friend David uh, asked that question again. Uh, and then as he asked that question about what would happen, uh, he asked another question. Uh, he said, who is uh, uh, this uncircumcised Philistine uh, that he should defile the armies uh, of a living God? Uh, uh, brother, and the words uh, uh, got to Saul. Uh, and Saul looked at David uh, and said, David, you're just a youth. Uh, uh, this man's been a warrior uh, uh, since his youth. Uh, and David said to Saul, uh, uh, Saul, let me tell you something. Uh, I keep my service, Jesse's, uh, my father's sheep out there. Uh, and one day a bear uh, and a lion come up. Uh, and he said, and I grabbed them by the beard uh, and I slew them. Uh, and the same God, uh, uh, this living God, uh, uh, the same God uh, uh, that protected me then uh, uh, will protect me now. Uh, and so then uh, he convinced uh, uh, Saul that he was going to go uh, and Saul wanted to uh, uh, give him his armor to put on him uh, uh, but David said uh, I haven't proved it uh, he couldn't hardly walk after he'd got it all on uh, so he took it all off uh, and he just got his sling uh, and he got him five smooth stones uh, and he went out uh, uh, my friend and when he went out there uh, and that giant uh, uh, six cubits he was only uh, about nine foot tall uh, uh, but to a normal average Jew uh, and especially uh, uh, to a lad uh, uh, he seemed like a giant of a man uh, and so then uh, uh, Goliath got upset uh, and he said am I a dog uh, uh, my friend that you would send uh, uh, this lad out uh, and David didn't uh, uh, walk up carefully uh, uh, but David ran the Bible said uh, and he looked at him uh, and he said you come to me uh, uh, with a sword and a spirit uh, uh, but I come to you uh, in the name of the Lord 
word, uh, slung that slang. Uh, and my friend, of all the places uh, of this giant was covered, uh, there was a spot right here uh, uh, that God directed it. Uh, and it went in, uh, uh, brother, and it knocked him down. Uh, and David grabbed his sword uh, and he killed him. Uh, uh, cut off his head. Uh, uh, let me say this, uh, uh, my friend. Uh, uh, that's because uh, uh, David was serving uh, a living God. Uh, uh, none of uh, uh, the Palestines or the Philistines, uh, uh, none of their gods, uh, uh, brother, was alive. Uh, uh, the God Diane uh, is not alive. Uh, I want you to know today, uh, uh, my friend, that Buddha uh, is not alive. Uh, I want you to know that Muhammad uh, is not not alive uh, but the God of heaven uh, is a living God uh, he's still alive uh, and so then uh, uh, it went on uh, uh, my friend uh, uh, chapter after chapter uh, book after book uh, and then I ran across another story uh, another familiar one uh, the Bible said in the sixth chapter uh, of the book of Daniel uh, uh, my friend that Darius, uh, uh, that king, uh, had a hundred uh, and twenty princes, uh, and on them he had uh, uh, three uh, uh, on top of them, uh, and on that uh, Daniel was the chosen one. Uh, Daniel was head of all them, uh, and so them them princes, uh, uh, my friend, got together uh, along with uh, uh, the governor and a bunch of them, uh, and they said, uh, "We got." to try to, uh, to find something wrong with his God. Uh, but prior to that uh, uh, they went to uh, uh, this King Darius uh, and they said to him uh, uh, after they had made him some big jot you might say said King uh, we need for you to make a decree uh, uh, that for 30 days uh, no one will pray uh, or make a petition to another God uh, according to the law uh, of the Medes and the Persians. Uh, when that was made uh, it could not be broken uh, and so they said except you O king uh, uh, they can make a petition to you uh, uh, they can pray to you if they want to uh, uh, but not to nobody else uh, oh, I want you to know something uh, Daniel saw that uh, he saw what uh, uh, they had said about it but the Bible said uh, with Dave, uh, Daniel's uh, uh, window being opened up towards Jerusalem Jerusalem, uh, he prayed three times a day uh, and they saw him uh, and they came to Darius uh, and they said Darius uh, uh, Daniel's down there praying uh, and then he's uh, looking out the window uh, uh, facing Jerusalem and he's praying uh, and you said he couldn't do it uh, uh, because uh, there's a decree made uh, according to the laws of the Persians I tell you, Darius regretted it. Uh, there was a word in there that he used, and I looked it up, and it said, with regret. Uh, he regretted that he made it. Uh, uh, my friend, but I want you to know something. Uh, I gotta, I'm going to read, I think, instead of quoting it uh, uh, to you. But anyway, uh, he took him, and he put him in the lion's den. And watch this. The king went to the palace. He passed that night fasting. Neither was her instruments of music brought before him. And his sheep went from him, or his sleep went from him. Then the king arose very early in the morning and went in haste unto the den of lions. And when he had come to the den, he cried with lamentations. In the voice of Daniel and said, uh, he cried with, the, with the lamentations, and with the voice of Daniel, he said, let me read that again. And when he had came to the den, he cried with lamentations, a voice unto Daniel, and the, the king spake and said to Daniel, O Daniel, servant of what? Servant of a living God. He knew that God was alive. He said, servant of a living God. Is thy God 
whom thou serve continually, able to deliver thee from the, the lions. And David answered back, O king, live forever. I want you to know today that we're serving a living God. If you want your prayers to be answered, then you pray to the living God. Not some of these idols and statues that they got erected. Not some empty or not some cross with a body on it. Because the cross is empty, brother. Christ got down on it. Matter of fact, he got up to John, the revelator, and told John, he said, John, I'm he that was dead, but I'm alive, and I'm alive forevermore. He is a living God. Daniel said he was a living God. Saul's uh, David said he's a living God. There are several places in here that said he's a living God. And do you know what? Of all the people they ever have been and ever will be, this little few is gathered here today knows and serves a living God. My, oh my. They think that the presidency of the United States is a high position. It may be just for the United States, but I want you to know that the United States is not the earth or the stars or the other planets, but the living God that made all them and told us that he's alive and alive forevermore. Thank God. Go home today saying, I serve a living God. I don't have much more to say to you this morning. When I just read that, and I read about the living God, it just blessed my soul. And I want to tell you, we're serving the living God today. And it'll bless you. Amen. Well, like I said, I'm not going to say much more. I'd like for us to stand to our feet today.